Hello friends, welcome to our next video podcast on this topic of using naltrexone for impulse control or self-injurious behaviors. So let's begin this discussion today. And uh, I did a very uh, thorough literature search and my goal was to look at only randomized controlled trials on this topic. But unfortunately, we don't have much trials on this topic. I do prescribe naltrexone for these indications and I have seen good responses. But this podcast will help you in choosing naltrexone as one option in selective patients. So in this podcast, I will focus on only three disorders, which I was able to find good um, studies on. So the first one is kleptomania. We all know in DSM-5, kleptomania is uh, in this class called disruptive impulse control and conduct disorder. Second one is pathological gambling, which is in non-substance related disorders in DSM-5. And third one is our personality disorder, borderline personality disorder. I have used naltrexone more in borderline personality disorder with good response in selective patients. And uh, so I will try to summarize this podcast in nine questions. Question number one, is what dose of naltrexone is found effective in these disorders. So let's start with kleptomania. I was only able to find one study on kleptomania. This was a eight week double blind placebo controlled trial for kleptomania. And this is what they found. Dose between 50 to 150 milligram per day was found effective with mean dose of 116.7 plus minus 44.4 milligram per day dosing. Now this is very interesting point because when I started prescribing naltrexone, I rarely went above 100 milligram, maximum 75 in some cases or 50 milligram twice daily. But these studies have shown that higher doses are needed in some cases and they have seen good response with this dose going beyond 100 milligram per day. How about pathological gambling? I found many studies actually for pathological gambling compared to kleptomania. And uh, the first study actually shows that low dose of 50 milligram is as efficacious as 100 milligram or 150 milligram per day dosing. And the second study showed the average, look at the number, average dose was 187.5, plus minus 96.45 milligram per day. Very high dosages here. So the main um, learning lesson for these two disorder is that most of these cases may benefit with higher dosages. But here's a caution that I wanna talk about is higher dosages mean higher risk of side effect and increasing the risk of hepatic injury. So be mindful of that. We'll talk about that in a few minutes again. And the third disorder, the borderline personality disorder, I found few studies on these one. Most of them were like a case report or case series. The first one, showed a good response at 50 milligram per day dosing. But this patient was already stable on fluoxetine, 80 milligram daily dosing. And the second study also showed good response to 50 milligram per day dosing. But this patient had failed multiple other classes of medications like Welproic acid, sertraline, doxepine, risperidone, So, but this patient, according to this case report, showed a very drastic improvement after naltrexone was added. The one thing I noticed on on in this disorder is most cases responded to 50 milligram per day dosing, 
but in my practice, I have seen good response between 50 to 100 milligram per day dosing. So do consider higher dosing option if indicated and if patient is not showing improvement at lower dosages. So this was our question number one regarding what dose to use. Question number two is what symptoms uh, reductions are seen with naltrexone? So starting with kleptomania, the same study that I talked about, it showed reduction in both stealing urges and behaviors. For pathological gambling, same result was seen with the studies. It resulted in reduction in both gambling urges and behavior. And for borderline personality disorder, it resulted in reduction in two important symptoms. First was self-injurious behavior and second was dissociative symptoms. And I found spe specific studies only focusing on dissociative symptoms. But for the sake of time, I'll not talk about this here. But you can read all the references in the end with the link to articles or PubMed links if you want to read more details of each topic here. So this was our question number two, which showed us that naltrexone reduced symptoms of both urges and behaviors in these conditions. Now moving on to question number three, which is, are there any factors that are associated with positive response to naltrexone? I looked at all these three disorders, but I only found positive uh, factor for one condition, which was pathological gambling. And this article shows that family history of addiction, or I should say alcohol use disorder specifically, was associated with good response to naltrexone. And also I have not included this here, but I also found a study for similar result for trichotillomania. Uh, same family history of addiction was shown to be a good positive response factor from Naltrex on there also. Now, moving on to question number four, where is naltrexone not found effective? We saw the effectiveness so far, but I found one study where impulse control disorders in Parkinson disease, very well done study. I think that was published in the uh, Neurology Journal in 2014. It showed naltrexone to be not effective in this subclass of impulse control disorders. And the second indication is if you use naltrexone on as needed basis, PRN basis. So that actually makes us move to question number five, which is, is naltrexone effective if prescribed on as needed basis? We already know the answer, but I found only one study here, again in pathological gambling, not in other disorders. And this study, was actually a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. And it shows no benefit of using naltrexone 50 milligram as needed. I'm not sure if using higher dosages could have done uh, any difference, but this study was done for 50 milligram as needed dosages. No effectiveness. You need to prescribe this on a standing basis on a daily basis for patients to see some response. Now, question number six, which side effects are commonly seen with naltrexone? Mostly naltrexone is well tolerated medications, but most common symptoms that we see in first week of initiating this medication is GI side effect, nausea, diarrhea, or headaches. But you can go to the package insert. I have placed the link in the end you can read all the common and uncommon side effect from naltrexone. But one side effect that we need to be mindful of is increase in liver enzymes, primarily transaminases. Most of the time it may not be symptomatic, but when they did studies on naltrexone before its approval, 
for alcohol use disorder and opioid use disorder, they found few cases of increase in liver enzymes. Now the next question on this topic is, what increases the risk of abnormal increase in liver enzymes with naltrexone? So the first thing is high doses of naltrexone. So in these specific cases, sometimes higher dosages are indicated. Closely monitor for any increase in liver enzymes or symptoms associated with liver injury. We'll talk about the monitoring guidelines in two minutes. This is the first factor, high dosages. Second is if patient is also getting prescription of analgesics or any other hepatotoxic medication. Third is patient with pre-existing liver disease, alcoholic liver disease, for example, here. And fourth is patient with hepatitis infection, hep, hep B or hep C there. You need to monitor them very closely if you see these factors with your patients. So the next question after this is, how will you monitor when you prescribe naltrexone? The first thing you need to monitor that we just talked about is liver function test. You need to have a baseline liver function test before you prescribe, and then at six month mark, and then 12 month mark. After this, you can do on an yearly basis, every 12 monthly. The second lab test you need to do is kidney function test because naltrexone is ex uh, removed mostly through the renal pathway. When you do a kidney function test, do a baseline level and you need to have a creatinine clearance of at least more than 50 ml per minute. In my practice, I aim for more than 60 before prescribing this. And the third in female is uh, for pregnancy testing, beta HCG because of the teratogenic risk potential with naltrexone. These are the main labs that I mostly do in my practice. And last question is, is naltrexone contraindicated in certain situations or conditions? Yes. And these are the situations you need to not prescribe naltrexone. First that we all know is patient is on opioid analgesic. You prescribe naltrexone, it's a blocker, opioid blocker, mu opioid receptor blocker. It will cause an active withdrawal in your patient. So don't prescribe it if they're on it. And the other thing is if patient is on opioid agonist like methadone or partial agonist like buprenorphine, suboxone. And third, if patient urine drug screen is positive for opioids, I forgot to mention in the um, monitoring, always do urine drug screen also before prescribing naltrexone. And also if a patient has failed naloxone challenge test, that means patient is at high risk of withdrawal if you give them naltrexone. And third is patient is in acute opioid withdrawal, you don't prescribe it. Mostly you need to wait for seven to 10 days uh, in terms of patient not on any opioids medication for seven to 10 days before naltrexone can be safely prescribed in terms of patient not going into acute opioid withdrawals. So friends, this was our podcast for today. I have actually summarized this podcast in this PDF book you can download this book. I will place the link below. Please click on this link. It will take you to a page. And there I have uh, placed the PDF, uh, the download link for this book. So do subscribe to our course, Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry course. I will place the, uh, the link on how to subscribe if you have not already done. So thank you, friends. This is our last information. Do like us on Facebook page. We have a Twitter page. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not done already. And we are also on LinkedIn. And this is my email. Contact me if you have any questions. 
or any concerns or anything you want to add. So thank you again. You all have a good day. Take care. Bye.